Hello, and many thanks for joining. I hope you are enjoying the event. I certainly am. And are now ready to spend the next 40 minutes discussing how payments are at the heart of luxury user experience. So I wanted to start by quickly introducing myself and my role at WorldPay. I am the VP for Global Retail and B2B, responsible for strategy, marketing, and partnerships globally. And we use industry insights and data analysis to build propositions that are hyper-targeted to retailers. And as WorldPay is the number one global acquirer and processes over 31 million transactions across all channels on any given day, we have a very broad view of how and where consumers around the world are paying for goods. Actually, our largest vertical is re in retail is fashion and luxury represents a very high percentage. So I am very excited to be sharing some of these insights today. We will be spending the next 30 minutes going through the findings of our latest two research reports, Power Your Payments and Retail Global Payments Report, and then open up for, open up for questions. So I would love to answer as many questions as you have. So please make sure that you start asking those from the beginning on the chat. And then depending on the time we have left, I will be answering uh, at the end. So some of the topics that we will dive into are the role of payments in the user experience, some of the top global trends for fashion and luxury, one of which is, of course, omnichannel, but I think it deserves its kind of its own chapter. And then Q&A, like I said. So let's first start with the introduction. And I wanted to share a video about WorldPay. Today's customers expect to pay in ways that are fast, frictionless, and ever advancing. So while they're booking holidays with just a couple of clicks, we're processing over 300 different payment methods, holding deposits, changing currencies, and distributing funds keeping things simple and secure for everyone involved. Modern payments still start with money changing hands, but it's more flexible and complex than ever before. For someone like a growing restaurant brand, we see it as a way to help them unlock new opportunities by advancing the way payments work for them. From takeout app orders, to diners in the restaurants, subscriptions to cooking classes, or online marketplaces selling their products in over 140 countries. From point of sale to global e-commerce, we handle the hidden complexity behind today's world of moving money. This means customers get to enjoy simple, one-click purchases wherever they are. While merchants see their customer interactions in a single reporting experience, as well as data and insights from the bank to the customer, giving them a unique view of the entire finance and e-commerce cycle. No matter how complex your needs, with WorldPay from FIS, the possibilities are endless. WorldPay from FIS, advancing the way the world pays, banks, and invests. Great, so maybe that has given you a little bit of a sense of what, uh, who we are at WorldPay. So now let's really dig into the data and the research. Like we discussed yesterday, COVID has pushed the industry pretty much five years ahead in only a few months. And we had been seeing a big fashion and retail transformation right before, but now this has massively accelerated, right? And as you can see in here, the Center for Retail Research estimates around 15,000 UK stores closed and 6,000 retailers going into bankruptcy. But actually, what this just means is that brands, more than ever, need to reinvent themselves and invest in the new opportunity, which is e-commerce. And we are expecting e-commerce to grow at 24% year on year in 2020, versus the 15% growth from last year. So I want to share some of the opportunities e-commerce brings and some tips on how to get it right. But just before we get into the topic, 
I wanted to ask you all a question. So you would have a poll popping up. In your opinion, how important is the payment process for the user experience? If we consider one and two like not important at all, to so then like 10, nine to 10 crucial. It would be good to know how you feel about it because we've had we've had a lot of different uh, a different responses to this. Very interesting. Okay, great. So perfect. So a lot of you uh, are thinking that it's actually very very important, which it makes me very happy. And if we go back to the slides, then. I can show you what we found on our survey. Overall, uh, people scored it a 7.6, which is not bad. It's lower than you what you guys have done, which is great. But then I am hoping that also after this presentation, you're all going to be scoring it a 10 if you didn't already. So let's start with the role of payments in the user experience. I really wanted to highlight here that over 40% of global fashion shoppers will drop out if their preferred payment method isn't available. And a further 16% will pay that one time with that brand, but will not buy from that brand again. So we're going to take a look at the whole shopping journey here and see how payments plays an important role from the very beginning at the awareness and search step all the way until the confirmation of purchase. So if we start at the beginning, when your shoppers are searching, can you actually take payments without any redirects from new channels like social media? We're gonna talk about social a little bit later. Then, do you show which payment methods you're offering on the homepage? Because over 60% of global shoppers want to see the payment methods available on the homepage, so way before the checkout. And also, how do you reassure your shopper? And actually, we also found out that 60% of the shoppers are more likely to buy if they see a lock symbol in your website. And yes, this is just a symbol. It doesn't mean anything, but it actually reassures your shopper, your shopper. And these two are pretty easy to implement. So if you aren't already displaying them, you should definitely think about it. The next one is probably a bit more obvious, but local language and local currencies also have a big influence on shoppers. And over 40% of global shoppers demand it. Then as we move forward with the shopping journey, guest checkout is important. 44% of shoppers will be more likely to buy if there is a guest checkout option. And of course, offering the right local payment methods and making sure there is no friction at checkout is more important than ever. And this gets even more difficult when we need the checkout to be mobile optimized because now mobile is the most used channel to pay for fashion. We have surveyed 33,000 shoppers globally asking about their digital payment experiences. And mobile is now a must for fashion retailers, like we are saying. Over 60% of shoppers buy on mobile, either on browser or app. But of course, there are some differences by regions. For example, US shoppers are more mobile browsers than app, use more mobile apps as the, than apps. But Germany tends to be less open to newer technologies, actually, so has the largest number of desktop shoppers in the world. And then on the opposite extreme, we have China, where over 80% of purchases are made on a mobile device. And in this case, it's mainly apps. So it is key to have a seamless, consistent user experience and payment experience across all of the channels and devices. And payment methods are no different, really. Long gone are those times when shopper will pay only cash in store and card online. 
Right now, the payment landscape is extremely fragmented and changes massively by country and by generation. For example, in fashion, card is still the preferred payment method, but digital wallets like PayPal are growing faster than ever. And if we look at the split by country, China, once again, is leading the way. It's all about digital wallets. Over 70% of shoppers use them to pay. And the market is split equally between Alipay and WeChat Pay. Then Germany and Spain are big PayPal users, for example. I have this very high level rule that splits Europe into two parts. The north of Europe is less card heavy overall, and the south of Europe is more card heavy. That said, with the digital push that we're all experiencing with COVID, we see countries like Spain starting to use more and more digital wallets. And then Japan, which has always, always been a very cash heavy country, is now moving massively to card. But why is this really important? And can't we just offer a card and forget about the rest? That is a question that I get asked a lot of times. Well, actually, our research shows that not anymore. Because over 40% of fashion shoppers will drop out if they can't find their preferred payment method. And even worse, 65% of those will buy a similar product from a competitor. And as you know, the more we move online, the easier it is to find products from competitors and they are just one click away. The main reason for fashion shoppers to use their preferred payment method is convenience, as you see on the graph on the right. We are all looking for a seamless, almost invisible payment experience. But age also greatly influences payment behaviors and the expectations for fashion. The same way we split Europe between North and South in terms of payment methods, we can split our shoppers by generations. The younger generations are less willing to even have a card anymore, while the older generations are used to it and less eager to change. And this goes across all of the new technology. But we are seeing that COVID is actually making the older generations pick up much quicker than before rather than by choice, by the lack of it, really. And you see in here that almost 70% of 18 to 34 years old have paid for a product through social media. And almost 60% feel very comfortable using fingerprints, the technology, as a way to authenticate themselves. And lastly, and extremely important, they are very experience savvy and won't be okay with these long, difficult checkout experiences that many companies unfortunately still have. 76% of them are more likely to purchase if one click is available. And to offer one click, you need to start thinking about tokenizing and saving your shoppers payment details. So the next time they come to you, you already know who they are, how they want to pay, which payment method they want to use, and just ask them for consent of the payment, that one click. We have now looked at the role of payments across the whole user experience. So let's now move to some of the global trends we are now seeing in the fashion and luxury industry. Based on our data and our research, we have identified four big trends to survive in the post-crisis landscape. Number one is social shopping is the new normal. Number two, buy now, pay later goes mainstream. Three, replenish through subscriptions. And shopping, ha shopping has no borders anymore. So let's start with social shopping. Gen Z was driving social shopping before the pandemic, for sure. 
And the big question has always been if social is just a marketing channel or a real sales channel. But the old buy buttons are not good enough anymore because as you can see in this quote, younger generations will not put up with redirects to websites or any obstacles at checkout. It is important to enable payment without leaving the experience. And we at WorldPay have a prototype with Facebook Messenger to go through the whole purchasing funnel, including those payments, without leaving the chat and without asking the shepherd to really leave the experience. But are shoppers ready to buy from social media? Well, if you can see in this slide, 54% of global shoppers said that they have bought fashion on social media. And this actually includes luxury. So this really brings tons of opportunity for fashion and luxury retailers. Like we have seen, it is already a sales channel as over 50% of shoppers are likely to buy using social media. And this is even more common in new generations. As you can see, two in three Gen Cs have bought on social media. But now with the pandemic, it has spread across all generations, really. And Facebook reported a 50% increase in Facebook users in the last six months and a 70% increase in Facebook Messenger users in the areas with lockdown. So this means that brands that start considering social media as a channel of their omnichannel experience are going to drive more sales than those that don't. So let's now move to buy now, pay later. But once again, the younger generations have been the main driver for this payment method. But the pandemic and the impact on the economy is actually pushing its growth. And as you can see from the quote, many shoppers have tried for the first time a buy now, pay later payment method during lockdown. But once again, the big question is how big is the opportunity? And our research shows that over 70% of people either use a buy now, pay later payment method or are considering to do it. And one in four shoppers always pay using a buy now, pay later payment method. This is more prevalent in younger generations once again, as 30% of 18 to 24 year old always buy fashion this way. And it is also very relevant to luxury as over 30% would use it for high price items. So the demand is already there. We are seeing a 30% year on year growth globally which is the fastest growth of any other payment method. And also very interesting that shoppers are actually very loyal. So 30% of them wouldn't buy if they didn't have this offer. But even more important, we see around 15% increases in average basket sizes when paying with a buy now, pay later payment method. So this just shows that it is definitely something to add to everyone's payment agenda. And now we're gonna move into subscriptions. But again, if you have any questions or want to know more, please ask the question in the chat. And even if we run out of time, we will try to get back to you after. So subscriptions from a brand perspective, it is a great idea, right? because it gives you a consistent and sometimes even additional revenue while it's creating the loyal customer base. But are shoppers really using them? Our research shows that 25% of global shoppers already have a fashion subscription. And almost 20% have had one in the past and almost 40% will start one in the next year. Actually, these numbers are massive. 
So there is definitely an appetite for box subscriptions. But as growth had flattered, COVID has pushed subscriptions back up. And now over 40% of global shoppers are likely to start a subscription. We had been seeing 100% year-on-year growth on box subscriptions for the last five years. And now since COVID, two in five consumers have signed up to a new subscription. So great, we have demand and people are ready to pay on a, subscri on a subscription base. But how relevant is this for fashion and luxury? Well, actually very relevant because curation subscriptions represent 55% of the market. So almost 50% of shoppers would sign up for a monthly surprise treat, which is a nice fit into fashion and luxury, right? And then over 10% of subscribers are looking for some kind of VIP access, which once again fits nicely into luxury. So it's no longer only about replenishment, it is actually more about the curation and the experience. But with subscriptions, a lot of payment challenges come. And it's actually, they're very particular and quite difficult to manage. And things like which day and which time are you going to capture the payment? And are you going to be updating all of the lost or expired cards on file, even without the shopper having to? Those things are key to make this work. So it's very, very important that you ask your payment provider for best practices and the best technology to define your subscription strategy. And then we have our last trend, which is shopping without borders. Like, you know, the, the more the world transacts online, the more opportunity there is to sell international. And COVID is pushing this, like we've seen. We have seen over 20% year-on-year growth in global cross-border sales in H1 this year. And our research says that 55% of online shoppers made purchases cross-border. And we are expecting cross-border e-commerce to reach 660 billion euros by 2023. So the opportunity is massive. Now, the countries that sell internationally most are Australia, Mexico, and China. And the number one product sold cross-border is actually fashion. So very relevant for all of you today to think about new markets to reach new shoppers in this digital area. But once again, knowing your shopper is key and one size doesn't fit all. In this graph, you can see some of the main reasons of shoppers to buy cross-border. There's a bit of a difference between US and Europe that are more after lower prices, probably because they have broader offerings. But then APAC and LATAM are looking more at uniqueness of product that maybe they cannot get locally. And now we are just going to move into our last part of the presentation, which is Omnitunnel. And we have found that Omnitunnel is the most important payment related initiative for retailers. Actually, 40% said they will be implementing an Omnitunnel initiative in the next 18th month. In the next 18th month. This has been one of our top strategic discussions with our retailers this year, really. And everyone's asking what the omni-channel experience should look like and how do you implement it properly? And our data and our experience shows that there are three clear themes that every retailer should look into. The first one is that both physical and digital presence are important. So this graph shows for each step of the purchasing funnel, which channel shoppers prefer to use. 
For example, in here, you can see that the website, as of now, is the preferred channel across the board. But actually, physical stores are still very important, especially for browsing, purchasing, and returns. And then social media, like we've said before, is becoming key, especially when browsing and when giving and searching for feedback. So it is important for everyone to have a mix of all of the channels to have this best seamless shopper experience. Now we move to the second thing. Convenience is key, but so are payments. And this graph shows the reason why consumers prefer to use one channel over another. And you can see that convenience is either the number one or number two across all channels, which doesn't sound that surprising as we're all looking for the easiest and fastest way to shop. But some of the other reasons are worth highlighting. So in the physical store, it's all about customer care. And you need to make sure that you give the customer that hyper-targeted expert interaction that they are after. And for the rest of the channels, payments was named as the number one or number two reason to use the channel. And in here, we had a mix of things like offering my preferred payment method or allowing me to store my card details or offering the most secure way to pay. And this is when we at WorldPay get very excited because payments play a massive part in optimizing your omnichannel customer journey. And it is key to get payments right for your shopper. And then the last thing, returns are the new normal and you need to get them right. As we move more to online shopping, returns are going to increase. Of course, the number of return changes by vertical, but for us in fashion, it could be normal to see up to 60% returns, which is massive. But you need to get them right because 37% of shoppers won't buy again from you if, if they have a payment challenge during a return. And it actually looks like 62% are experiencing some kind of challenge. And this graph shows what are those challenges? Almost 50% said that it took too long to get their money back, closely followed by having to pay for returns. So remember that you have one shot to get this right. We have working with a lot of our retailers to get the money back to the shopper immediately with new payment methods like real-time payments. Definitely worth a think. And that was really it for me. So we covered a lot of content. So just before we move into some of the questions, which I see that we do have quite a lot, uh, just remember that payments play a key role across the whole user experience. There is no longer an option to only offer one payment method. And digital wallets are key. Remember to reassure your shopper, display the payment methods on the homepage and those lock symbols that actually make a difference. Then we've identified four key global trends that you need to at least consider and see if they fit into your business model. Social commerce, buy now, pay later, subscriptions, and cross-border sales. And then last but not least, Omnichannel is now a must to survive. So remember, all of the channels are important, physical and digital. Convenience is key, but so are payments, and returns are expected. So you definitely have to get them right. Perfect. So let's move now into some of the questions in here. Uh, one that just came in said, if we were considering implementing a subscription offer, what would be the first step? So my answer would be the first step is to really understand what type of subscription would, will your company, your product, your business model, and your shopper fit nicely into. Like we've said before, we group box subscriptions into three. So you have the replenishment one. If you are selling, for example, beauty products and uh, people are fairly loyal to the brand, then you just need to keep 
sending them whenever they are they're running out of it and they will get the new replacement automatically then that's a really nice fit but for example if you're more into clothing then you need to move more towards a curation subscription potentially so how are you people want to like be surprised like we've said over 50 percent wanted to so uh, is this going to be like a quarterly uh, box with a new look for people to try or how is that going to work so that would be like the first step but then you need to think about how are you going to take that payment and like i've said before which day of the week are you going to take that payment that is that can make like a deal uh, breaker so your payment could get declined if it is sent maybe the last day of the month before people get paid for example or which day at which time on in the day same it has a massive uh difference into accepting a payment and getting it declined and then things like what we call the account updater so if your shopper gets your the card lost or uh, it's expired, it is very annoying for you to just go in there and have to change it, right? It happens to all of us. Well, actually your payment provider can give you uh, this option, this functionality, which we can upload and refresh all of the updated cards automatically without your shopper saying anything or um, uh, even noticing which is fantastic because then you're making all of the payment uh, frictionless and seamless. So that would be my question. Uh, there's another one here around buy now, pay later. Do you predict buy now, pay later will lose its fast fashion identity and how can luxury brands uh, balance attainability and exclusivity? I mean, that is a, a very good question. I think buy now, pay later seems to be the preferred PIM method for the younger generation. So now, like we were discussing yesterday on the keynote as well, a lot of the younger generations don't actually even want a credit card anymore. They don't want to go through all of uh, yeah, the credit, uh, credit scores and any of those issues that they're having. So they find by now pay later um, payment methods that are really great for them. So if that's how your shopper wants to pay it doesn't really matter if you're selling luxury or if you're selling anything else that's how they should be paying and that's what you should be offering that is my view so i, I really don't see this slowing down uh even worse like probably post covid and the impact that covid has had on the economy it's going to make this pay installments also like a bigger option for everybody else so definitely something to to consider and it also depending by country right there are countries where you would not be able to sell anything unless you offer it like sweden for example where we saw yesterday that around uh 35 percent if i remember correctly of uh the fashion purchases online are made with a buy now pay later payment method so that way otherwise you wouldn't have access to that market so definitely something to uh, to discuss. And then what time is it? I think we've kind of run out of time. So I see many more questions in here, but I don't think I can take any more. So just to say thank you very much. And uh, if you have, uh, if you want to follow up, please contact me or anyone at WorldPay, and we would love uh, to, yeah, to have more of these discussions around these hot topics. Thank you.